pitch notes. Here we go. Hi everyone, the spring update, title update 11, is releasing soon and we're eager to tell you about the new exciting changes and additions coming to EA Sports FC 24. The update adds 86 new star heads. I was averaging four seconds, was I? Okay, that's really good. And refreshes the gameplay experience through playstyle tuning and legendary CPU AI difficulty adjustments. Oh, everything I've been waiting for all at once. Also, we're adding in some new animations. Yes, based on volumetric data captured from the UCL group stage. Come on. Additionally, the spring update releases several issues. Oh, it addresses several issues. And you can check out the full TU notes on the EA Sports FC tracker gameplay. Playstyles tuning. When it comes to Playstyles and Playstyles Plus, we want to maintain a strategic difference between them. So we've made several tuning changes. Our goal here is to ensure that meaningfully different options are available to players when building their squads with playstyles and playstyle plus is helping offer greater variety. So before I actually get into this, I first of all really hope that this isn't them nerfing playstyle pluses because players are getting too good with them. Because then you might as well just not have them in the first place if you're just going to draw like draw, drive them down. Instead, I hope that this is balancing playstyle pluses so that all of them have value rather than just some of them. Um, Tiki Taka lowered accuracy and pass difficulty of first time passes. Ping Pass decreased accuracy of driven passes. Ping Pass Plus increased accuracy of driven passes. Wow. Jockey reduced maximum possible jockey sprint speed. Okay, that is absolutely negligible. Um, press Proven reduced shield effectiveness with the ball. Press Proven Plus increased shield effectiveness and increased strength attribute effectiveness while shielding. Long Ball Pass and Long Ball Pass Plus decreased accuracy of crosses. What? Power Header increased ball speed from lower powered headers. Dead Ball reduced set piece preview line length. I, like, I'm just going to be honest, right? This is dumb. Because what they're effectively saying without actually saying it, when it comes to like press proven, for example, and when it comes to pinged pass, see how they're decreasing the value of the regular playstyle and increasing the value of the playstyle plus, right? The reason why that's genuinely a problem is because now it's going to mean that if you don't even have the playstyle, the player is going to be atrocious. And having the play style is going to be what normal feels like. I feel like this is, I just feel like this is a bit stupid. Long ball, yeah, dead ball. Reduce the set piece preview. No, nobody, nobody was bothered by this. Nobody was bothered. Significantly adjusted the play styles below. Power header plus. Reduced ball speed for medium to high power headers. But why? Relentless and Relentless Plus, reduced amount of half-time and extra-time stamina recovery. A Aerial Plus, reduced the amount of running jump height. This includes jogging jump height as well. Power Shot and Power Shot Plus, reduced the build ball speed from power shots. This is a terrible, terrible change. Well, hold on. This appears to be a terrible, terrible change. We might get into this, play it, and it could be like insane, right? It might actually balance the game good. But off my first impressions and first understanding of how the game currently works versus what they're saying they're doing, this is going to be really, really poor. CPU AI changes. The spring update brings changes to legendary CPU AI difficulty, intending to offer a fresh experience when playing this challenge, challenging level of opponent. Adjusted level legendary difficulty CPU AI behavior. Legendary AI teams known for Tiki Taka play style are less likely to focus on that style of play when near the opponent's penalty area. CPU AI players are more likely to perform shots types based on their respective play styles when applicable. Players with low composure attributes are more likely to make mistakes when pressed. Our objective is to give more agency to our players, especially on the defensive side when defending against legendary CPU AI. Players can now have more time to react effectively, anticipate the CPU AI's moves. 
We also made several changes aimed at creating more differentiation between matches. This includes different differences in attack tendencies between teams and the way they respond to pressure. These changes can make the match-to-match -match experience feel more unique while offering a satisfying challenge. Maybe we'll try that out. I can't believe that that's going to be the case. We look forward to seeing player feedback on legendary CPU AI across career mode and ultimate team. New animations on volumetric data. Uh, EA Sports FC24 bought Hypermotion V and 14 volumetric data, an advanced gameplay technology that creates true-to-football animations using capture of player movement from real-life competition competitive matches. For the first time post-launch, Title Update 11 brings the addition of several new animations based on volumetric data captured from the real matches in the UEFA Champions League group stage. These animations are designed to make the game look and feel true to life. Shooting animations. Starting from the attacking side, we have added shooting animations based on capture from multiple real-world competitive games, including a goal scored by Haaland. Cool. New skill animations. Vinicius Jr. is one of the most spectacular and creative players out there in the world of football today. His offensive creativity always puts a lot of pressure on opponents. We'll be adding the new skill move by pressing L L2 and R2 while standing. The previous trick to skill move with this input has been moved to L1, R, L2, R2. Cool. cool. New clearance animation. Finally, on the defensive side, we're adding a new clearance animation based on defensive height from the U 2024 UCL match between Bruce Dortmund and Paris Saint-Germain. The animation is now in-game and can shine in goal line save situations. Cool. Um, and then they had the ultimate team and more. Updated legendary difficulty. We kind of already read towards that. Um, new player items in ultimate team. To further highlight spring update changes, a new SBC will soon be available in ultimate team. This SBC will reward a player pick featuring player items from three promoted teams in English Premier League this season, Sheffield United, Burnley and Luton. Player moments, Anel Ahmed Hodzic. It will have increased speed and acceleration attributes as well as block plus, jockey plus play styles. This unique combination of attributes and play styles is intended to help players effectively defend against ever-changing attacking threats. For example, the refreshed legendary CPU AI squad battles. Also be on the lookout for an update to NL Starhead following server release in the near future. Has he already got a, a card or is that them saying that they're bringing it? Oh, so he, he's obviously going to be... Oh, they're literally saying who it's going to be. It's going to be player moments, Ahmed Hodzic, and he's going to have block plus and jockey plus or... Carlton Morris. So this is a player. Was it a player pick? Yeah, player pick. Player moments, Carlton Morris. The Carlton Morris moments player item will have increased finishing, composure, and shot power attributes. The combination of attributes can be important for an effective attacking goal scorer, and we look forward to seeing players perform the new shooting animations. And player moments, Benson Manuel. Benson Manuel will moments player item will have tricks to plus and five-star skill move rating. The combination can help players to effectively perform various skill moves in game, including new skill move we added to title update 11. Cool. I mean, it doesn't seem like there's any playstyle pluses for Carl Morris, which is a bit lame. Um, more star heads. Playstyles, UI, and online matches. By the way, we've addressed an issue which caused playstyle indicators not to show up in the match UI as intended. Going forward, you'll be able to see the opposing players' playstyles near their stamina bar. And that's it. Um, well... I'm uh, perplexed. I'm a, I'm a bit, I'm just a bit, yeah. I'm a bit, I'm just a bit confused. I get the idea of increasing the value and the way certain playstyle pluses work. Where people have been complaining that all year that players should be able to do stuff without playstyles. This is a dub update for them, though. I don't think this makes players without playstyles good, Dave. I think this keeps players without playstyles terrible and makes players with these certain playstyles worse. The fact that they're reducing the accuracy of ping pass is for ping pass, reducing the accuracy and quality of first time passes with Tiki Taka reducing the poss maximum possible jockey speed spin with jockey, reducing the shield effectiveness with press proven, 
decrease the accuracy of crosses from long ball, pass, and plus, reduce set piece preview length. That did say dead ball, not dead ball plus, though, to be fair. Although I don't think dead ball regular was even, but I thought it was good. I, did, I, I thought it was balanced. I feel like this is just an unnecessary change. Reducing the ball speed for power header plus, reducing the stamina from relentless and relentless plus, reducing the amount of uh, running jump and jogging jump height from aerial plus, reducing the ball speed from power shots on power shot and power shot plus. It is a massive reduction. And the, the reason why it's kind of like so dumb is because you're effectively just making this current crop of players worse for the sole purpose of making the, the incoming crop of players from foot birthday and from team of the season actually be noticeably better. Right, Because if we look at some of the best players in the game right now, we can even take this Rolfo, right? And she's not even like where she's going to be. This Rolfo on a shadow has got four star, five star, tricks to plus and ping pass plus, relentless, which is great, quick step, whip pass, technical, first touch, etc. And these insane stats. By the time she gets to a 93 rated, which she will get to a 93 rated, right? Barring like another injury or something like that. But she's going to be ridiculous. Ridiculously, she's gonna like she's gonna be so good compared to like team of the season cards. We take Declan Rice as well. He is definitely gonna go to a 94 rated card, right? He's four star, four star with anticipate plus, intercept plus, and then power shot. It's been nerfed. Ping pass. It's been nerfed. Long ball pass. It's been nerfed. Press proven. It's been nerfed. They have nerfed four of his play styles because they know that when he gets three more in an upgrade, this is gonna be a team of the year level card. Right. And so for me, it appears like what they've done is they've realized, holy crap, like cards are getting to be end game and we're only in March. Oh, yeah, Ariel, too. So they've nerfed five of his playstyles. It feels like then they're, they're literally nerfing the power curve of the cards that we've got up until this point to, so that they're not competitive with cards that we're going to get throughout the future promos. Because, and I was thinking this anyway. Like, and we spoke about this a few times too as well, but where can they go from here? Like, other than three playstyle pluses, where can they go from here? And the only thing that they could possibly have done is nerf everything that they've got right now so that when three playstyle pluses or four playstyle pluses come, the players actually are standout different. Like, look at Akanji as well. This Akanji showdown, four star weak foot for a centre back, intercept plus, block plus. King pass getting nerfed, long ball pass getting nerfed, jockey getting nerfed, aerial getting nerfed. And obviously, if you've upgraded this guy as well, you've got an even better card on him. It's absolutely bonkers. So they've done what they feel like they have to do to make upcoming promo cards relevant. Um, the, the, like, I, I guess we know better than to give EA the benefit of the doubt. But the only thing I can say is that maybe, maybe this actually balances the game a little bit and creates more opportunity for more different ways of playing. But what I feel like is that this is a way to make the current crop of best cards um, a little bit worse so that you can notice when the new promo cards come in. What other cards are really, really good right now that are, are quite new to the game? Team of the season will have less of an impact on the game than foot fantasy. Yeah, true. Well, that's what I mean, though, because like, if, if we look at team of the season from like previous years, let's go to FIFA 23, right? FIFA 23, team of the season. Okay, you've got the elite level cards. But even if you're looking at the second page of cards, this is just the second page of cards. These are 94s. And this is the second page of cards. How, like, we already have, if we look at the current FC24 cards, we already have, okay, that's just team of the season cards, but, like, obviously we've got icons and stuff in here as well. But we've already got an insane amount, not too many 94s, to be fair, but 93s and 92s we're in, in abundance of. Um, how is EA going to ever make a card like... Gabriel Jesus, team of the season last year. 
okay, he's not going to get a team of the season this year, obviously. But let's like I I, do, I go I go back to Declan Rice. I think this is the perfect opportunity to look at it. This Declan Rice will be ninety four rated in the coming weeks, and so his team of the season card is going to have to be like either ninety five rated, which will be awful if you've already got a 94 rated rice that's been in uh in the game for so long i mean it was only 89 rated last year so it's not really a fair comparison but uh what about what about saka last year did saka get a team of the year last year sorry team of the season last year yeah look look at saka's team of the season last year compared to his 91s this year and isn't this road to the final as well which means, was this road to the final or road to the knockout? Oh, that was team of the group stage. Is this one road to the final? No, it's road to the knockout. Um, either way, look at this Saka versus this Saka. 92 pace versus 96. 88 shooting versus 90. 94 dribbling the same. A little lower on physical, a little lower on passing. But this is a team of the year, sorry, team of the season card versus a card that's been in the game for like a month and a half already. They can make the same card rate and put add a play star plus and just like three or four regulars. Yeah, they could. They could. Um, it's just, it's just a bit mad, isn't it? It's just a bit mad. I think. Uh, I I do think that this is their way of trying to bring down the power curve because there's nowhere to go. You know, like when you look at again when we look at some of the best players in the game right now, for play styles and whatnot. And for, and for playstyle pluses, more specifically just for playstyles, there's so many, so many players in the game at the moment. Um, if we, in fact, let's just look at the, uh, the fantasy cards, right? Now, okay, some of them are like crazy expensive. But th th this, I think Miedemar is a prime example of why they, they feel like they might need to nerf the power curve. Because she might go up to a 92, right? Maybe she will, maybe she won't. I think she probably will go up to a 92. But this card is 46,000 coins, and it is incredible. And they are nerfing Power Shot. They are nerfing Tiki Taka. They are nerfing Press Proven. They are nerfing Aerial. And I, like, I've, obviously, as an Arsenal fan, I've played a lot with this card. And I can tell you guys with some confidence, this card is insane. And it's due a couple of upgrades, right? So once you put a hunter on her, insane pace, insane shooting, incredible dribbling, good physicals, good passing, great play styles. How could they ever, like, what, like when she becomes a 92 rated, right? As, assuming she does, let's, let's assume she does. But how, how could she ever, how, how could they then release a team of the season card that's like 91 rated, that's just never going to be anywhere near as good as this Miedemar, right? And it's why they kind of, they probably feel like they need to do it. And I'll I tell you another player as well, I think goes, and it may, maybe this is just the way that I play, but this De Jong card is insane. Genuinely insane in the game, right? Okay, I get it. He's got low agility and balance. But similar to, to Miedemar, you put a hunter on this guy. Mm, I probably, I, I don't even know if I've got a hunter, but he's got insane pace. He's lengthy. He's got five-star weak foot, four-star skill moves. He's six foot tall. He's got Aerial Plus, which is huge, which has been nerfed. He's got Power Shot that's been nerfed, and he's got Tiki Taka that's been nerfed, right? And I can't even, like, I know people, like, don't like this card because he's not pretty. He's not Eusebio. He doesn't have high agility and balance and stuff. This card, I can't tell you how many times this card saved me. He's insane. And all of a sudden, they're nerfing a card like this. And so... Yeah, it, for me, it feels like they're doing what they can to bring down the power curve so that foot birthday cards and team of the season cards are actually going to be notably better than the current cards that we currently have because I, I, I fear that if they didn't do that, team of the season, like, I feel like we'd be waiting for like the end promo to get 97 to 99 rated cards before you get any notable change or three playstyle pluses before you get any notable change. So... That's the new update, though, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. I'm out. Peace.